One other thing I want to talk about is that we're also going to, in this class, we're also going to create something called a research uh, report. This is, the, the idea here is you've, after you do your research proposal, you then, uh, and maybe you're doing your research proposal so that you can apply for a grant. You know, you're asking for funding for your research, so you describe in great detail how you're going to do it and why it's needed and so on. Um, or if you're doing a thesis uh, in graduate school, uh, you also need to do a research proposal and have your committee approve it before you go ahead and, and do research. Or another reason, I mean, there's a number of different reasons why you would be doing a research proposal. One other is uh, you might need to get uh, approval from what's called the Institutional Review Board at your university, which is basically a committee that's designed uh, to check over for any ethical concerns that there might be with your study. So there's, so there's a number of reasons you create this research proposal. The idea is once that's been approved or you've decided to go ahead with the research that you proposed, then you collect your data, you actually conduct the experiment, and then it turns into your research report. So you take your proposal, you edit it, you add the actual results that you found, you add on to that to discuss those results, and that will essentially turn into your research report, which if it turns out well, you might then submit to a journal and that might actually, this, this guy over here, the research report might actually be what gets published in a scientific journal. So normally you propose your research, it gets approved by whoever needs to approve it, you decide to proceed, you collect your data, and then that leads to your research report. In this class, um, I'm probably not going to have you do that. The reason is, well, let me, uh, let me talk a little bit about what it's like from the teacher's perspective, uh, just so that you kind of understand why I'm going to approach it the way I'm, I'm going to approach it. This is always a challenge of figuring out how to get all of this, both a research proposal and a research report into the semester. Because for the research report, we actually have to collect some data. We have to really do the study and analyze it and finish the report. That can get to be a lot to manage, both for you guys and for me. Um, if every student in the class is doing their own research on their own topic that they're interested in, that can become pretty unmanageable. And also there's the issue of, uh, I mean, by unmanageable, I mean that I may not have enough time to really help each of you uh, to the degree that you deserve, to the degree that will make your lives uh, low stress and still allow you to learn a lot in the class. Um, the other problem that can come up is that we need participants for these studies. So we're, for the research report, we're actually going to be collecting data from real people, testing some, something relating to their psychology and reporting on that. Uh, for that to happen, we need, you, the number of participants you need in a study varies, and that's an important topic we'll get to later, but you can kind of think of it as about two dozen people uh, that we're going to need for each study if, and there's about two dozen people in this class. If every person uh, does their own individual research, we're going to need a lot of participants, which we might be able to get. But again, uh, looking at this, I decided that this might just be a little bit too much to try to cram in. It might be too stressful and actually get in the way of us really learning the concepts in the class. So what I, I am not completely settled on this, but what I am leaning toward at this stage is in this first part of the course, I'm going to let you pick a topic uh, that is whatever you're interested in and you're going to get practice putting this research proposal together which means you get to uh, work with something that you're really curious about and uh, and that's where you're going to be searching the literature reading a lot of articles getting practice reading scientific journal articles uh, but we're probably not going to have you go ahead and you know, after your research proposal, I'm probably not going to have you go ahead and actually do that study. Instead, what I am planning on doing, at least at this point, for the research report is giving you uh, everyone the same project to work on. And I think that that will work really well in terms of uh, sort of freeing up time in the class and also just making the actual uh, research report uh, a little more structured and a little more straightforward to you so you can focus 
on mastering the concepts and, and not worrying quite so much about individual specific things that might be going wrong or becoming issues with your particular uh, research. So I just wanted to go over that to make that clear that we're basically going to do two things. One is the research proposal. These are sort of uh, the two largest things we're doing in this class, the research proposal and then the research report, which are going to be very similar processes. Both of them you're going to be looking at uh, past research, you're going to be creating, you know, typing up some sort of argument for why the current research is needed. Um, but in the second case, uh, with the research report, I'll give you more structure, I'll provide you with a topic. Whereas with the research proposal, I'm going to let you uh, give you substantially more freedom to just look at whatever you're interested in, whatever you're curious about. So hopefully that gives you, uh, hopefully that makes sense and uh, gives you an idea of where we're headed and uh, how the next several assignments and the uh, topics and concepts we're gonna cover all sort of fit together.